Our first speaker that we get to hear from this morning is Obianuju Ekeosha. She is going to be joining me from somewhere in a minute. Um, she is the founder and president of Culture of Life Africa. This is an initiative that is dedicated to the promotion of the defense of African values of the sanctity of life, we like that, the beauty of marriage, the blessing of motherhood, and the dignity of family life. So that is an awesome organization that is doing great work um, in Africa. She, we are blessed to have her with us. You know, as of, she just told me this morning, she has been in 50 cities in 18 countries. It's pretty impressive. Um, you might have seen her on different things like BBC television and radio or EWTN, Ave Maria, or Relevant Radio. So please, let's give a beautiful, warm welcome um, to Obian Nuju. Okay, so before she speaks, we'll just say a prayer with her this morning. So in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for the gift of our beautiful friend. We ask that you would inspire her with words that will touch our hearts. We pray in a special way in union with our brothers and sisters in Africa who are also fighting to defend the sanctity of human life. And we ask that you would give her the words that she needs to say this morning to us. In your name we pray, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I need to hear a warm welcome for everyone who has come from the different parts of the United States of America. If you have come here to stand for life, just give yourself a warm welcome. But as someone who has come from outside of the United States, I also want to give a shout out for Everybody who has come from outside of the United States. Anybody here coming from outside the United States? And because I'm so biased and I live in the United Kingdom, I want to give even a, a, a more warm welcome for the group that has come from Scotland and they are called Project Truth. Please give them a warm welcome, Project Truth. I'm so very grateful that we are all gathered here today. That we have gathered not only from the di different cities in the United States, but we have gathered from the different uh, states of the United States, but beyond that, people have come from far and wide. Not because uh, people are looking for a place to go or just a way to travel and have some fun, but because what we have all gathered here today for is one of the most important issues in our world today. We are here to end the human rights crisis that is abortion. Every time in history, an unjust law is put in place. We see something like slavery come up and then it's codified into law. And one group of people begin to abuse another group of people. We have seen it happen before in slavery. We have seen it happen before during the Holocaust. As an African, it's actually something very close to my heart because we saw something similar during the Rwandan genocide. Brothers and sisters, you and I today, perhaps we haven't been in all this, at all these points in history when human rights was grossly abused. But among us today, there is a silent genocide happening. And all of us here today have come to say, we want to see an end to this genocide that is abortion. You see, I've heard this, this particular uh, quote that inspires me every day and gets me going. It goes like this. Laws come and go, but universal truths remain. Now, the universal truth we have come together today to agree on is that human life 
begins at conception without exception. So laws come and go, but universal truths remain. And I know that there are a lot of young people here today, so I'm very encouraged because we will fight this fight to the end. If it's going to take us another five years or another 10 years, brothers and sisters, another 40 years, we will see an end to abortion. I grew up in Africa. I was actually born and raised in Nigeria. Any Nigerians here today? Woo! I was born in Nigeria and raised in Nigeria. And for the first 26 years of my life, I grew up not knowing that abortion could ever be legal in any part of the world. So before I left my country, I was completely naive. I felt and thought that every human life should be protected because that was the kind of community I came from. By law, every life was protected. Then I moved over to England, and one of the first culture shocks I got was to find out that abortion was legal in this country where I moved. And I thought to myself, goodness, who will bring an end to this injustice? For many years, I actually did not get involved in the pro-life movement until a series of things happened in my life. And I realized that the media is not with us. I realized that most of the powerful politicians around the world are not speaking up against this injustice. Instead, many of them support it. I realized that every, most of the wealthy people were not with us. Hollywood is not with us. But then I had to look in the mirror one day and I said to myself, this problem, this injustice, this crisis, I am going to have to fight it with everybody who is ready to fight it. So look at the person in front of you. Take a good look at the person in front of you. I promise you I won't ask you to hug them. Now turn around and look at the person just behind you. And the person on your left. And the person on your right. That's it. That's it. This is the pro-life army. This is the army that is going to end abortion. We are the army that will end abortion. We are the pro-life generation. Who are you? You are the pro-life generation. Who are you? Who are you? You are the pro-life generation, and I'm very encouraged by that. In 2018, last year, I stayed awake on the 31st of December at night, just waiting for the midnight, for the new year. But what I really was keeping vigil for was that I wanted to know exactly how many abortions occurred or how many abortions were committed in the year of 2018. So I stood there looking at the timer. There is a website that I went to and I was actually doing the count uh, up, if you like, to the new year. And by the time the clock struck midnight, I found out from this website that there had been in the year of 2018, a total of 42 million, 5,031 abortions. That is how serious this problem is. More than 42 million of our brothers and sisters were killed in 2018 without anybody 
announcing it on TV without anybody doing any real thing about it as rega with regards to government, without any lamentation, everything was still going on, but 42 million lives were snuffed out. This is a real crisis. And this is a number that we have to hold close to our hearts in 2019. This is the, this is the number that should get us when we go out of here, it should inspire us so that anybody we see and speak to, we can tell them, do you know what happened in 2018? Do you know the number one cause of death in the year of 2018? It is abortion. Because of for the 42 million children who were killed, I would like to ask you, to make a strong resolution. I know it's amazing that we've all come to this March for Life. It's great that we March for Life right at the beginning of the year. But when you leave this place, when you leave the March for Life and all your pro-life friends and all the pro-life brothers and sisters that you get to meet in this place, you then have to take the battle to your schools, to your friends, to your families. But this is a peaceful battle that I'm speaking about. But you have to rise up and show up anywhere there is a pro-life activity or anything to promote life. You rise up, you show up, you speak up, and you never stop until we see an end to abortion. <laughs> so I studied uh, microbiology at the university in Nigeria. And as part of my course, I had to take a lot of modules on biology, human biology. And of course, one interesting thing was to study the development of the baby in the womb. We did a lot of embryology. And it was actually quite surprising to me to learn, even at that point, that in the first trimester of a baby's life, the first 12 weeks, within the first 12 weeks, one can see the little arms already and the little legs. The baby's organs are already fully formed. The heartbeat is detected. I think the science is settled. Life begins when? At conception. Life begins when? Life begins when? And the science is settled. The science is settled. So the science is settled. And sometimes when we try to speak about pro-life issues with our friends and we try to bring it up, many times people say to us, oh, you're just bringing your Catholic faith and you're trying to stifle us. But you tell them that you are speaking from a point of science. Yes, we love our faith. Yes. We are so grateful to God that we are made in his image and likeness, including the baby in the womb. But even from a point of science, the science is settled and human life begins at conception without exception. So we have to stand on that point and we have to tell people, pro-life is pro-science. Pro-life is pro-science and hold on to that point. So we carry our science forward and we tell people this is exactly the truth. We are pro-life and anybody who is not pro-life is a science denier. So we have to help people not to deny science, to acknowledge the humanity of the child in the womb, but to, to also know that if we are going to really fight for human rights, we cannot have human rights until the life of every baby in the womb is protected in every country of the world. Now, from the point of faith, in my language, we have a name that goes Chi Wendu. Chi Wendu. God owns life. God owns life. Every life has been given by God Almighty. 
and no man, no woman, no nurse, no doctor, no politician has the right to say that we do not have a right to life from the womb. The right to life of the womb should start from the right to life should start from the womb to the tomb. Okay. Now, just a brief word for my beloved sisters. Any woman here today, any girls here today? Just a brief word to my sisters today. Brothers, just spare me one minute. But dear sisters, they're telling us that we need abortion to be free. They are telling us that for us to be empowered, we need abortion. They're telling us that to get a good career, to be able to rise in this life, that we need abortion. But there is just one statement and one response we should have to that. That no woman should ever have to buy success with the blood of her baby. None of us should ever have to buy success with the blood of our baby. And until abortion is completely abolished, women will never be completely free. Because abortion enslaves us, it does not give us any kind of freedom. So I'll just invite us all today to resolve within our minds that when we leave this mass and then go to the match and finish the match and leave the match, that we will look in the mirror on any given day and say to ourselves, we have got no one but us, and we are going to be the ones to end abortion. Every day, every day, we will end abortion. We will end abortion because we are the pro-life generation. You are the pro-life generation. You are the pro-life generation, and you will bring an end to the crises and abomination that is abortion. Because laws come and go, but universal truths remain. And what is the universal truth? The universal truth is that human life begins at conception without exception. Thank you.